Okay, here's my example of my cat's eyes. Um, I think they're just really beautiful. And um, I, I was very lucky to find her when we were out on the lanai, so there was lots of light. And I want you to understand a little bit better about what an eye is like. It's literally a globe. And um, I think when you understand the anatomical um, manufactures of an eye and the muscles involved, then perhaps you'll paint it better. So, um, and you can see that they're not the same color. I think that's really important to observe because a lot of times we think that if we have one eye, we have to have them exactly the same. In this case, they are definitely not the same. I always start in the center area and I don't put the black in. It's the very last thing I do, but I want to get some base color in. There's also some very strong highlights here. As a general rule, I don't like to use masking fluid on eyes. I find it leaves a hard edge and it doesn't allow my paint to flow easily around it. So um, I just am going to put the white in after the fact and hopefully we'll get that far today. On this eye in particular, I see a lot of turquoise um, and this eye I see much, much more yellow green. But either way, I'm going to start with a, a relatively small brush and uh, keep my paints kind of um, wet when I'm working with them so that they blend. Okay, let's get going. I also think about directional strokes the whole time that I'm putting this color in so that I can have it, the, the, the spokes of the eye come from the iris itself. I don't worry about uh, painting into the iris. The iris is black, so it won't be a big deal. But I am painting in that direction. I want to pick up a little bit of a yellow color. Yellow with the turquoise is, of course, going to make a green, which is nice. And here it's even more green over here. Just getting some base color in. I generally work one eye at a time and I almost always work um, when I'm doing any form of a, a animal or a person I almost always work the eyes first. I mean, you know if you don't have the eyes right then you, you know the rest of it doesn't matter how perfect the fur or the skin is if you don't have the eyes right it just doesn't speak to you. I'm going to try to also have this just be exactly less half an hour or less. Notice I'm always doing the strokes in the direction of the iris. I was looking at the anatomy of a I, a cat's eye this morning just because I thought it might be interesting but then when I got to reading it, it was way more way more information than I and not one that I could remember that too that I thought you'd really care about but there is a whole um, page in Google of the anatomy of a, of a cat's eye and having said that I'm sure there's the anatomy of a dog's eye and everything else that's going to dry and while that's drying, I'm gonna move right over to this one. This one, I see a lot of this really um, yellow, yellow green. So when I say that, I'm just gonna start with putting in my yellow right now. This is pretty strong. This is new gamboge, but that's okay. And when I go over the edge, again, it doesn't matter because that's, you know, it's like they have makeup on. This goes into a green much more of a green yellow and I am painting what I call almost dry brush um, even though I'm painting on a wet surface um, I'm picking up there's very little moisture in my brush this is much deeper on this side 
So I'm going to go to an olive. And yes, I could make my olive. One of the best olives you can make is uh, Payne's Gray and uh, New Gamboge. Um, however, I, I purchased an olive green because I use it a lot. I think greens are the most challenging color to paint. And having said that, I um, just decided to cut to the chase. I don't have to reinvent the wheel on everything I do. I don't know, you can't see the uh, photo reference I'm working from, but um, this is coming. There's some reddish browns over here. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of the, my burnt scarlet, burnt orange. Don't be surprised if my cat doesn't join me up here in the middle. She loves to do that. While I'm painting, she likes to jump right on the middle of my paper. Today she might be good. But if she isn't, she isn't. It's okay. She's been such a joy to have um, during this pandemic. I'll tell you, she just she's uh, been very attentive to us both and uh, wants to sit on her lap most of the time. Always the directional strokes from the center. I think that's key. The other thing is you have, when you have, you have to remember that an eye sits back down into the framework of the the anatomy of the cat itself. There's an eyelid, and it's gonna the eyelid is going to cast a shadow. So when we get all these lines in, you'll notice I'm not being particularly careful. I don't want to cover up everything I've done in between, so I'm doing literally like strokes. Strokes and spokes, more like a wheel. And right now it looks scary. It looks like I really shouldn't be teaching this. And that's okay. That's okay. This eye is much, much darker than this one. Okay, I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to go back to this one. Because as wet as I've had that, then obviously I've lost a lot of my color. So I'm going to go back into some of my turquoise. Make these lines stronger. Not enough water. I've been actually enjoying a lot of this isolation in that I've been able to paint almost every day. And, um, and and not just on teaching, you know, although I've been doing some teaching as well. Um, I've just really enjoyed this time where I can paint some of the things I want to paint and not worry so much about what my students are doing. Um, and I love, I love my students, but um, I also like to do some of my own work once in a while too. And when you teach all the time, you sometimes just don't have that option. I'm never afraid to do some blending at this point. Just dampen my brush. That's just water. And this area is going to be very light, so I'm going to blot. This goes a little dark in the corner. It's a beautiful day here in Florida today. The sun is shining. It's just gorgeous. These really look scary until you get the uh, until you get the pupil in, but sometimes you have to do that before you do anything else. I want to get the highlight of the eye. 
Now remember I said that there's a shadow. It's a shadow cast by the actual eyelid of the eye. Um, and the shadow should imply kind of the color that it's falling on. So this would be a really a, a brownish, a brownish green. So I'm mixing up a color here and I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to put that line in now. That's the shadow. You know there's hard edges, soft edges. At the top is a hard edge, at the bottom is a soft edge. So I'm going to tickle that edge ever so slightly. Nice. Nice. Let's see where I am over here. This looks like a whole bunch of lines and it's not reading the way I would like it to. So I'm going to blend some of them a little bit. And again, going to go back to that same shadow color. Maybe just a little bit darker. I find um, I, my sponge is my best friend. My sponge is my best friend. I take all the excess water off with my sponge, but re regardless, sometimes I'm using a, a brush that holds a lot of water. Um, I have a couple favorite brushes. I'm sure you do too. And I want to add just a few dots. Some imperfections in the eye. I could splatter them on, it really wouldn't matter. But, um, I like to add a little variety of color. And again, this one is much darker than this one. Okay. I don't buy purchase black, I make my black. Um, that's courtesy of class I took. And um, so I have a, a, a tin of black that I made and I love it because um, I do black backgrounds fairly often. And um, when I do, I like to have the richness of paint. So by making my own black, in theory you should be making it every time you paint if you're going to use black. Yeah, uh, obviously it was a fairly bright day when I took this photo because her eyes are in this shape of this marquee shape in the center. And um, that's not necessarily always typical of a cat. You know, sometimes they have the big open eyes and sometimes they have the slit. So it just depends on how much light they're exposed to, also whether they're in hunting mode or not. And because I'm painting fairly dry, you can see that I can go right into this without too much danger of having it blossom. However, if you tend to use a lot of water, you've got to let it dry before you put this on. Already it's starting to come alive. Um, and as much as I like to think it's perfect just the way it is, I need to draw some of these lines out. So again, with a very dry brush, I'm just picking up just a few, a little bit of that black. Into the eye itself. It also reads as though the eye is expanded. I 
I need to soften that edge a little bit in here. So I'm going to add a little yellow and just fuzzy that edge. I've got some contrast going to, I mean, obviously I'm going to put the white in, but um, at this point I'd, I've got it too, um, too light and the white wouldn't even show. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. And my black is rich enough that when I draw it out like this, I don't know if you can see those real fine, fine lines. I'll try to do a close up if I can at the very end. It's a good start, it isn't finished. Still need to have this darker. I don't worry too much if it if it isn't perfect. I really don't. Um, number one, they're not going to have the photo of my cat when they're done. It's a cat eye. I mean, you know, it is what it is. And if it looks if it looks like an eye, they're going to read it as an eye. Darken this a little bit more. Now I'm going to put the eyeshadow on. I think I'm going to use a little bit larger brush. I normally would turn my painting to do this so that I could see the edge of my brush. But for demo purposes, I'm a little limited in doing that. So I'm going to have to be careful. I'll just turn my body. I notice I haven't gone back to reload my brush. Um, and a lot of that is because I think when you're painting, a lot of people tend not to put enough paint on their brush. And then they say, oh, you know, it doesn't look like yours. Well, one, I've never been an advocate of it. It has to look like mine anyways. It should look like yours. It should be your style. And I take a lot of workshops as well as uh, teach. So um, I really, I'm, I'm more I'm more impressed with the students that say, hey, you know, I couldn't do it in the colors that you use, so I use these colors instead. And I am much more impressed with that than I am the ones that literally do copy it exactly. Now, I'm a big advocate of learn, copy to learn how to do things. That's not a big deal for me, but... You can see I still have not gone back into my well to get more paint. Looks pretty good, actually. Obviously, I would be adding some colors out here. And I'm letting the eye dry really well before I try to put the whites in. So this is a, a means of me just stalling a little bit for time, and, and that's okay. And I love orange, so there's going to be orange in every painting I ever do, probably. Okay, getting this far, I can see that this needs to be broader.
and this dark needs to be blended right into this shadow. So I'm going to pick up just a little bit of that, just an edge of that black. Good. I don't want to leave any halos. So I'm going to make a gray. My favorite gray is dark brown and dark blue. And then I water it down. So I'm going to give it just a little bit of the shadow right there. Again, it shows that the eye itself is rounded. It sits down into the socket. Okay, I'm happy with that one. Let's go over and do this one. And then I'll put the whites in and we'll be done. I'm obviously painting a lot faster than I really would also. Um, I, I like to have them really bone dry and I usually only do one eye at a time. Um, I'm less distracted by what the colors are on the other one if I do one eye at a time. Um, whereas if I'm doing two like I am today, you know, I tend to try to have to change change pews, so to speak. And say, well, where am I here? The other thing I'm just going to comment is cats don't have this little, uh, like I call a tear duct, like m most other animals have. Um, they do have another lid that sometimes comes up, um, which is fine, but um, cats don't have that. But if you want things to look really alive, I highly recommend that you put just a touch of pink in the corner of the eye where the tear duct would be. Um, it tends to make them look like they're alive. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a turtle or a dog or a horse or what it is, cow, they all seem to have that little tiny touch of pink. It's only after I get the really strong contrast in that I can really start to say, okay, what do I have to do to fix this? It's not done until the fat lady sings. Isn't that what they say? I'm going to bring that shadow down and around. Again, I want to show that this is part of the eye, so I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow down here. And that's my gray. I can blend it in. I left just a little touch of light down there. She's a beautiful cat. She's really a, a, a beautiful, beautiful cat. And we're really blessed in so many ways with dealing with the Florida watercolor. Um, they do allow you to use gouache and casein and all those other colors um, in your paintings, which really makes the shows very interesting, number one. And two, gives us a lot more freedom. Um, and not that the shows that don't, don't allow it don't give us freedom, but they just aren't as... Um, lenient when it comes to exhibition and then you know it keeps a lot of the some fine artists that really should be allowed in can't can't enter okay i need to stand back for just a moment and i'm going to get my white and then we'll be right back so hold on okay so here's the final strokes i am using casein c-a-s-e-i-n um, it's a little more challenging to find than gouache but um, it's also um, recognized as a water medium. It's just not as, um, it will dry up on your palette, I guess is what I want to say. So, uh, But I am going to put my highlights in now. This one's dry enough to actually have them take very well. I want to have it a little bit less than inky consistency so the viscosity has to be strong enough that um, it will stay on the paper 
but I don't want it wet enough because this is real this side is really wet. We'll see if we can cover it. And if we can't, you know, I can always go back in and do it again. Okay. I think I'm done. Um, not a, not a, a great, but I think it gave you some, some inspiration, and hopefully you'll be able to paint eyes more um, easier in the future. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.